So this is my basketball code window for Sports Code Pro. Now, if you're familiar with this channel, you'll think this code window looks very familiar to my Sports Code Elite um, version, and you'd be correct that it does look essentially identical to my Sports Code Elite code window, and you should see that as a good thing in that even with Sports Code Pro, you can get very high levels of analysis in terms of the labeling, the automation, all the sort of detail you can get, and you don't really need toggle buttons for any of it. So I'm going to go through my timeline to see uh, to show you what sort of information you get with this code window, show you the matrix so you can see what sort of label information you can get, and then I'll go through a little bit of the code window. So on the timeline, you get your two position rows. Uh, two position rows. Now I'm using Carolina versus NC State as my example here. So my two position rows: Carolina offense, Carolina defense. All my Carolina team rows: so made and missed shots, um, rebounds, turnover, block, steal, foul, and free throws. That same information for the opposition: NC State made and missed shots, to rebounds, turnover, block, foul, and free throws. Individual data: so this is every individual's shots, um, turnovers, assists rebounds, all that good stuff. We'll see that in more detail in the matrix. And then the minutes. <coughs> now this the minutes um, serve a function in the code window to allow labeling for the position rows. And I'll go through that soon. But in terms of their function in the output window and on the timeline, they're utterly useless. The minutes don't actually match up to what minutes players played and they're completely useless. So what I do with these at the end of a uh, pro game is I just delete them would get rid of them, no point whatsoever. Going to the matrix. So this is the sort of label information you get in this um, with this code window. You get each defense run. Now I've just got man and press because that's all I was running this game. However, that if a team did run zone or you want to add your own defense, there's a slot there to do that. Um, free throws for the team, that's boring. Um, player actions, so that's what's in all those individual rows. So assist, block, defensive foul, defensive rebound, made and missed shots, offensive rebound, steal and turnover. You can see all that information's over here to watch. Now, especially in Sports Code Pro, since you don't have movie functionality in the output window, this becomes especially um, important. So make sure you have all these clips ready to go. Um, players, so this is every offensive and defensive position each player played in. Now, that's why you don't need those minutes rows, because if you want to watch a player's um, contribution on the court. You just have to watch um, the clips in the matrix here. Plays. Now, I've only got one play that I tagged in this game just to show you where it is, but there's the group plays, pick and roll, and all your plays with all these different play slots down here, that's where they'll show up in the matrix. So you've got all these um, these options here. Now you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you've got 24 different play slots to go. So those all 24 of those play slots would show up in that group there. Beside that, you've got position length, so fast break or transition. Every other position is considered a half-court position or just not a position worth coding. Um, position situation, baseline out of bounds, sideline out of bounds. Now, there's also um, out, of, uh, out of timeout and end of game, which I didn't code for. A review, just in case there's any clips you want to highlight, and an extra button there if you want to add one. They'll show up in, that uh, in this particular label group. Position start, so how each position started. Did it start from a turnover? Did it start from a made shot? Did it start from a missed shot? And then these ones are just like nondescript. They didn't start from any of the below. Position tag. So this is like different, highlighting different events inside each position. So each position with an assist. Now we don't code assists for the opposition, so there won't be any number there. Blocks, Carolina fouls, defensive rebounds, NC State fouls, offensive rebounds, steal, and turnover. Shot location, so here's all the shot labeling that I was mentioning earlier. So you've got all your shot locations, so all the like left corner, left elbow, left post, left wing. The same stuff for the right hand side, rim, paint, middle two, middle three. Um, who took the shot, all your players here, as well as an opposition player for all the opposition shots. Um, shot quality, contested and uncontested, um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Shot result, um, that's also self-explanatory. And then shot type, so breakaway, catch and shoot two, catch and shoot three, cut, drive, floater, hezzy jumper, hook shot, off the dribble, post up, put back, and roll man. So you've got all this data, so the shot location, shot player, shot quality, shot result, and shot type. And the position rows, um, the team um, shot row, so Carolina made two, Carolina missed two, made three, and missed three, and then for each individual player as well. So you want to watch all of Davis's um, shots from the... Um, from the left corner, you can do that. You want to watch all of Sharp's uh, post-ups, you can do that as well. So it's really easy and quick to do. 
Now going to the code window itself, it's really easy to set up. Um, if, again, if you're familiar with my other work, you'll recognize a lot of the functions. You just have to change the names and colors for these two buttons here, and the scripting will do the rest in terms of changing names and colors for you. And then regarding the player labeling for your position rows, that's all done over here. So what you have to do is you put to put your man, um, you have to put manually your players in this um, column here. So as I have for Carolina, I've just put all my players in alphabetical order, sorry, num numerical order, and then it's going to copy among all these buttons here. And if you look at the bottom bar down here, you'll see that, for example, this is called Harris Minutes, Black Minutes, uh, Love Minutes, Playtech Minutes, Davis Minutes. However, they're just showing this. And when you click these. I'll just do it, the actual lineup. It's actually going to show up over here for these player slots. So that's not using um, toggle buttons. That's just using um, just ordinary code buttons. And again, these are going to form the minutes rows down below. And whenever I'm done with a game, I just delete all those minutes rows and I just leave all my labeling that was there for me. And it's just all going to go into these um, positions and it's also going to fill out my team, sorry, my player toggle slots. So when I go into offense and defense, it's going to show those players. Then I want to sub love out. I just have to go over here, select a player, come back, and that player is now changed just like that, as well as that player's changed in my off-screen labels as well. So that's how that works. I don't have the shot matrix. All the labeling occurs in the shots through a complex system of activation, exclusive links, and labels. So you don't have to worry about any of that. All that information is going to get going to go into each shot, the shot type, the shot location, and the shot quality, as long with the shot result and the shot player, all going to everywhere it needs to go, just through um, different sort of processes in the background. Now, if you want to see how this code window works in like a practical sense, if you look in the description below, there's a video showing me coding with this window, just like the first five minutes of this game, so you can kind of see how all the operations go together. And if you have any questions, you can just reach me in my email below, which is also in the description. If you want to purchase this code window along with the corresponding output window, um, you can also do that in the description below. Thank you very much and hope you learned something.